talk is talking right before lunch. So I want to let you know that all these all these resources are online on my website, and it's written on there for you. It's drpelto.com, and on there you can actually see the same presentation, and I'm actually giving the presentation. It's a re recording of it. You can just watch it online afterwards. If you have any questions, you can email me. Okay. So let's. Uh, this is where it's going to be. It's going to pop up on your web screen when you go there. It's going to have preventing falls and foot wounds and diabetes. And there's a couple of links that you can click on. And for those of you that, I know I have some patients I ask, do you have internet? And they say, what? What's internet? Some people still don't have that. And that's why I put a little handout on your table. The handout actually has two, two things to it. One is a booklet for you to read afterwards. It's called, it's a healthcare guide to diabetes in your feet. And it has, it answers some of the more common questions people have about foot wounds, how to do a foot exam, things like that. I ask you not to read it during the presentation, just kind of like when you're in school, right? You're not gonna read during the, the presentation. The other one is a handout to guide for seniors to falling. So I really think as we as we get older, we, we want to be careful not to have any falls, and, and I think education is power. So I want to provide you with some education both online and in print for you to refer to later. So let's go on and talk a little bit about um, preventing falls. The leading injury, the leading cause for falls in, in, in elderly, uh, the, the, the leading cause of injury and deaths among older adults is a fall. That's what we all want to prevent. And, and I'm going to go over a couple of the reasons they happen and a couple of things that you can do to help prevent them. So first of all, what's injured in a fall normally? When someone has a fall, usually it's your hip, it could be your head, it could be the other bones in your, in your, in your body. The most common one that we hear of, and you probably had friends or maybe it's happened to you, is your hip, right? But we also hear that problem, they get the hip injury, and then what happens? They go into the hospital, and they may never walk again, they may have to use a walker, they may have to go to rehab, whereas they were living alone before, and people really don't want to go into a rehabilitation. They want to keep living independently. So we're going to give a few more tips. Um, the, the main thing to really point out about falls is a lot of people think, well, I need to be careful when I'm out, out and about to avoid a fall. And the truth is, you have to really be careful inside of your house and right around your house, because the research shows that most of you are probably going to fall inside of your house or right around your house. It's not when you're going out that, that most of the falls happen. Most of the falls happen in the bedroom, living room, and then maybe kitchen. And, and the reason why it happens in the bedroom and the living room is because that's where you spend most of your time. So think of where you spend the most of the time you want to avoid the falls, okay? Also outside the house. Some risk factors that you may have. What are risk factors? Risk factors are the things that you may have that could cause a fall. The first one is neuropathy. Um, just, I'll explain a little bit what neuropathy is. Neuropathy is a lack of feeling or a lack of sensation that happens in your feet and your legs. It tends to happen in people with diabetes, but it can happen to a lot of other people. Uh, some people, when they have uh, actually this neuropathy, when they walk around, they actually stomp their legs like this as they get older and have neuropathy. And, and the reason they stomp their legs is because they don't have any feeling in their feet. And all they do is they feel that vibration going up their legs and their thighs. So neuropathy doesn't always start like that, it usually starts some numbness, some tingling in your feet, and, and it can kind of go up, and it really depends on your blood sugar level. So if you can control the blood sugar or your glucose level, that's the best thing that you can do to treat the neuropathy. There is a neurologist you may want to see, or you may need to see uh, a podiatrist, your podiatrist in town, okay? Also, ankle instability. Who's all heard of some, oh, I have weak ankles, or I tend to sprain my ankles. If you have weak ankles, or you feel a little a weak when you're walking around, that's another very big risk factor that you need to look into. Um, also, weak, weakness in the muscles and the thighs and the legs. Physical therapy and keeping act, active, as, as um, the other doctor talked about, is very, very important. The more active you are, the more your muscles are strong, can hold you up, and can prevent a fall. So really strengthening those muscles. That's why part of the treatment for dealing with falls and preventing falls is actually physical therapy. Have you, have you see a physical therapist? How about vision problems? Many people that have vision problems, they may not see something in front of them. They can develop macular degeneration or some type of retinopathy due to the diabetes. That's a big area of concern. And then the foot deformity. Someone may have a bunion, a hammer toe, a, a sore on their foot, something else that hurts them when they're walking and causes them to trip and fall. So those are some of the, the risk factors. But there's also risk factors that are around you. I know you probably already know this, but it's good just to repeat. The environmental hazards. If you have any rugs on the floor where you're living, 
these rugs, you, you shouldn't have them because you can very easily trip over them. I had a patient the other day in the, in the treatment room, and I was talking to this patient, and they, they had some neck problems, so they couldn't look down. And so they didn't see the rug, and they tripped and fell because of that, because of neck problems, because of vision problems, uh, as well as if you have any obstacles. I, I know there's probably no one here like this, but I know some people, they, they kind of like to store things. They like to keep things, right? So they get the, they, they've had, maybe they have the, the Worcester newspaper for the last 10 years in, in their apartment, right? But they don't want to throw it away, so they put it on the ground. And you really don't want to trip over something like that. So if you have any clutter in your house, you also have to, to look at doing that. I know there's some, some certain health agencies in town, probably a lot of them that are vendors here you could ask, but they'll actually go into your house and, and do a fall assessment for you. They'll look at look around in, in your surroundings, see if there's anything that needs to be taken care of. So that's something you should really look into doing. A fall assessment in your house, and then also come to see a doctor that can talk to you more about that. Now, as, we, as you just had a whole lecture on for an hour, are there certain medications that you're on that could cause risks of falls. That's a need to look into and talk to your geriatrician or your primary care doctor. Uh, there are some high blood pressure medications especially and also the diabetes medications. If you take too much of a diabetes medication, what can happen? You can get a little, little lightheaded and you could fall because of that. And then improper shoe gear and clothing. I remember my, my grandmother, uh, my, my grandmother, she always wore these um, the nightgowns. I think she wore that nightgown all day long. It didn't matter if it was night or not, but she wore it. And, and the nightgown was a little bit too long that she was wearing. And, and she always shuffled around like this with her long nightgown, and I was always scared that she'd trip over her nightgown. So you have to be careful. Are, is your nightgown too long? Are your pants too long? Are your shoes improper? That could cause uh, a fall. Now, this is just a, a big graphic that explains a lot of things, but most falls are caused by accidents. You, need, you don't need to go in there. But what you need to have is a fall plan. Okay, what are you using? Are you using a cane, a walker, or a scooter, or something to get around, or don't you have anything? The big patients that I can help in my office are the people that the doctor tells them, you have to use a cane, but they don't want to use a cane. How many, I'm not gonna ask, everyone's gonna raise their hand, but how many have been told you should use a cane, but you really don't want to use a cane, or you should use a walker, you really don't want to use one, and you, you say, you know, I know my house. Right? I know my house, I know my surroundings, I'm safe and I'm there. Well, we as professionals, we want to prevent you from, from falling. You know, if you're having to hold on to the wall, I have a list of questions here that I'll ask you later. Um, physical therapy may be necessary to strengthen, so you may need to talk to your primary care doctor about the medications, and then a podiatric or a foot evaluation. But really, these are the questions I ask my patients. You can just ask yourself these questions. Um, have you fallen in the past? If, if you have, maybe you should see someone and at least discuss the idea. Do you slip or trip or have near falls? Do you have a fear of falling? Did you know a fear of falling is just as bad as having a fall? Because when you're fearful of falling, when you're walking, you tend to reduce the amount of your steps. So normally if someone steps nice and big like this, if someone has a fear of falling, they tend to shuffle. And when you shuffle, you're at a greater risk of falling. You drag your feet when you're walking. A lot of patients, they lift up their foot and they have this thing called a foot drop. And so their foot drags. That's a big risk of falling. And then do you touch or hold on to the wall or furniture? If you have to walk around your house and you touch the wall or furniture to keep balanced, you should probably see a doctor, okay, for an evaluation for, for falls. Um, this is just one of the new technologies. I always like to bring something new when I talk to different groups. This is the newest thing that I found that really, that really helps people. Um, it's something that if you put it in your shoe, you put it on the back of your leg, it kind of looks like this. And it increases your feeling and it helps people to prevent falls. This is what I call, it's called the more balanced brace. Okay, it's one of the latest, greatest new technologies. It weighs about the, the weight of a cell phone. And for a lot of patients, they really like these, okay? It's called the more balanced brace. It, it's the best thing that I found at this point beyond doing a cane, doing a walk, or doing other types of things. This is used in conjunction with physical therapy and talking to your doctor. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to the second section. Okay, I want to talk quickly. They also asked me to talk about uh, preventing foot and diabetic foot problems. Okay, um, these are an example of some of the sores and wounds that I see for people that have diabetes. Why should you listen? Well, 85% of amputations start as wounds. Okay, um, does anyone has anyone here had a foot wound or have a loved one that's had a foot wound before? Foot ulcer. They're very very difficult to treat, and I'm going to give you some tips. Okay, I want to tell you about a little story about a patient of mine. Okay, 
This is a patient I saw in the emergency room. She had foot that was red, hot, and swollen, and she had this big sore underneath. Do you believe that that sore actually started out as a callus? The majority of sores that I see, they start out as calluses. So if you have some calluses, they should be treated professionally by a doctor. Okay? What are three and a half ways to prevent a foot wound? First, the easiest thing that you can do if you have diabetes is to look at your feet every day. But some of my patients, they got this, they got this thing in front of them that prevent, prevents that. They have the, the Dunlop disease. You know what the Dunlop disease is? It's where your belly Dunlops over your belt buckle and you can't get down there. So if any of you have that problem, you can try a, a mirror. That's really, really helpful. So look at your feet. That's really important. Wear the correct size shoes. Now, a lot of my patients, they come in, they're about 70, and they, they tell me, I've been a size 7 for my whole life. I've been a size 7 for my whole life, and they don't have a bigger shoe. But a lot of times, you may be in the wrong size shoe, and that shoe can cause problems. Just because you were size 7 when you were 16, doesn't mean you're a size 7 now. It may be a little bit bigger, so you should probably have your feet professionally measured. Also, have a professional cut your, trim your calluses. You shouldn't really be doing your own callus care, okay? You shouldn't be taking uh, a razor blade or anything like that at home. You should be seeing a professional. I have patients, they come in to me and they actually bring in the razor blade that they've been using. They show me, hey, this is what I've been, this has been working pretty good. And so I don't recommend that. And then the last one is to take responsibility and really get educated about your feet. There are books and there are lists and other things about how to take care of your feet, but I'm just giving you some general resources. But online, I've, I've put the diabetes toolkit on my website. It's a toolkit. It has information about your eyes, about your kidneys, about your teeth, about your feet. Pretty much anything that you want to know about diabetes in your feet, you just go to the website, click the diabetes toolkit, and it will take you there. It has some great information. If you want me to add anything, just let me know. And if you have any questions, you can email me and I'd be happy to answer. Okay? Now, just in, in closing, I want to talk about a foot wound. Because if you don't have a foot wound, you may develop one in the future if you have diabetes. So I want to tell you the, the four most important tips for healing a foot wound. Okay? I'd like you to imagine a big triangle. If you have a big triangle, there's three points on a triangle, right? The three points I'm going to go over, but the one that's in the center is blood sugar. If you have diabetes and a sore, the first thing you have to do is to take care of the blood sugar. And these are the other three points that go around it. So the first one is blood sugar in the center. And you have to be careful of your hemoglobin A1C. What should be the normal hemoglobin A1C? Does anyone know? Under 7. Under 7 is the proper amount. So if you have an elevated hemoglobin A1C, you're at greater risk of developing a, uh, an infection or the sore could get infected or it could take longer for it to heal. So make sure your blood sugar is in the proper realm. Blood flow. If you don't have enough plumbing getting down to your feet, you may need to see a vascular surgeon. You may need to see someone else. Because if you think about it, I had a patient one time, I saw him in the office, he had a foot wound, a sore, he had an infection. And I gave him an antibiotic. It was the right antibiotic, but it didn't work. Any idea why? It couldn't get to the foot because he didn't have enough blood flow going down there. That's why sometimes as doctors we have to use, have you heard of IV antibiotics where you put it in the vein? It's because it, it's, it's more readily available. It can get down there a lot better. And sometimes we actually have to put it right in the wound. So if you don't have good blood flow or you have a lot of swelling, that can slow down wound healing. If you have neuropathy, you don't have, you don't have healing. A lot of patients, they come in and they have a foot wound and they say, well, doc, my foot doesn't hurt, why should I stay out? Right? They don't have the gift of pain. They walk around all day foot wounds and they don't know that there's a problem because it doesn't hurt them. They don't know until they start having a fever or getting chills or having a problem. So if, if you have a foot wound or a sore on your foot and it doesn't hurt, you still have to stay off it. I tell my patients all the time, if I can keep you in bed for three months, I can stay off it. Thank you.